Uh, this is a female survival experiment using the cochineal culture. Cochineal culture was provided by Dr. Tang in Chris lab. Uh, I used this scale to indicate the relationship between the concentrations in my experiment and the cell densities in the field. You can see the red is the bloom density in the field. Okay, let's see the result. X axis is the time. Y axis is the copy for the survival. Uh, red is the filtered seawater. The green is the luminous. The blue lines are cochineal culture from low concentrations to high concentrations. Okay, so you can see cochineal significantly reduced the copy product survival. At high concentrations, all copy products died within two days. I also measured the copy product survival at the different uh, development stages from the nuclei to the adults. Okay. This is a copy product mortality data at the different uh, cochineal concentrations. Then I use this data to calculate the 24-hour 50% lethal concentration, which uh, increased with the development stage. So, uh, so copy products early life stages are more sensitive to cochineal. Now we know Cochlea can kill the copy pros. So what's the mode of the, the toxicity? I performed the two, exper uh, two experiments to answer this question. Uh, in the first experiment, copy pros are exposed to Cochlea live culture, frozen and solid culture, culture filtrate, and the filtered seawater. In the second experiment, I put the copy pros into the cages, which are covered by 100 micrometer mesh of five five micrometer mesh. Then I put them into the cochlear culture and the filtered seawater. Okay. 100 micrometer mesh could uh, permit the passage of the cochlear cells, but uh, five micrometer mesh could not. Okay. First, let's see this treatment. Five micrometer mesh cage in cochlear culture. So in this treatment, copy pros cannot directly contact with cochlear cells. Now you can see the mortality of this treatment is higher than the control, which suggests that cochlea can release some harmful compounds into the seawater. Okay, now let's see the culture filtrate. In this treatment, cochlea seals are removed. Now you can see the mortality of this treatment is the same as the control, which suggests that harmful compounds in the seawater are unstable. So, Cochlea can release some harmful compounds into the seawater, but those harmful compounds are unstable. The toxicity of the cochlea is depend on live cells. This is the first harmful compound. Now let's see those two treatments. 100 micrometer mesh cage and the five, micro, uh, five micrometer mesh cage. So copy pros can feed on cochlea cells in 100 micrometer mesh cage but not in five micrometer mesh cage. Now you can see the mortality of this treatment is higher than this one, which suggests that there may be some harmful compounds in cochlear cells, okay? Let's see the frozen and solid culture. The mortality of this treatment is higher than the control, which suggests the freezing and the thawing treatment can break the cochlear cells and release the inside harmful compounds into the seawater. I think that this is the second harmful compound. Although I don't know the structure and the characters of these harmful compounds, my experiment at least showed cochlea can produce multiple harmful compounds, which can kill the copy probes. Uh, this is the feeding experiment. Uh, X axis is the concentration y-axis is the copy for the ingestion rate. The red is cochlea, the green is luminous. So this experiment showed two things. First, copy pros can feed on cochlea cells. You can see this is the ingestion rate. Okay. Second, cochlea significantly, uh, significantly reduced the copy pro the, uh, copy pro the feeding. Okay. So this is a harmful effect. And the same result for the egg production and the hatching. Now you can see the red is cochlea, the green is the luminous. So you can see cochlea 
significantly reduce the copy blood egg production rate and the egg hatching subsides. Okay. Now we can answer our first question. Is uh, coccidinia harmful to their grazers? My study showed that coccidinia can produce multiple harmful compounds, which can reduce copy blood survival, feeding, and reproduction. So the answer is positive. Coccidinia is harmful to copy pros at high cell densities. Uh, this research was published in MAPS. Okay, now let's go to our second question. Is coccidinia always harmful to copy pros? I use a uh, mixed diet experiment to answer these questions. Mixed diet experiment has been developed to discern whether a given phytoplankton species is uh, beneficial, uh, nutritionally sufficient, or toxic to grazers. Grazers are offered the suspected prey, the control prey, and the mixed prey. For x-axis, here is 100% suspected prey. Here is 100% control prey. Then we measure grazer response, such as egg production, uh, egg hatching, or feeding. A reference line is drawn connecting the suspected prey and the control prey. If uh, suspect prey is higher than the control, the suspect prey is more beneficial than the control prey. If they are same, the suspect prey is equally beneficial as the control prey. Right? If suspect prey is lower than the control, the suspect prey is harmful to grazers. And we can separate the harmful effects into three cases. If a mixed prey fall along the reference, the suspect prey has no nutritional value. In this case, adding the suspect prey from here to here is just like adding the seawater. It's only a dilution effect. You can see it's only a dilution effect. So suspect prey has no nutritional value. If a mixed prey fall above the reference, the suspect prey has some nutritional value because it is higher than the because it is higher than the reference, right? But the, the nutritional value is insufficient because it is a still lower than the control, right? So in this case, suspect prey is a new, is a nutritionally insufficient. Okay. If a if a mixed prey are below the reference. The suspect prey is toxic to grazers. Uh, because in this case, suspect prey can detract from the beneficial effects of the control prey. You can see here is the beneficial effects of the control prey. And the suspect prey can detract this beneficial effects to here. So in this case, suspect prey is toxic. First, I performed the experiment at 600 microgram carbon per liter. I measure the copy blood egg production rate, hatching success, and the no prior recruitment rate on day one, day three, and day five. Okay. So you, uh, the red line is a reference line. The dotted lines are 95% confidence limits. Now you can see mixed brain, mixed brain four above the reference. This one, this one, this one. Sometimes mixed prey are below, uh, sometimes mixed prey are four along the reference. This one, this one, and this one. So the coccidium is a nutritionally insufficient or has no nutritional value to copy pros at these concentrations. Okay. So this result is a little different from what I expected. I expected to see toxic because coccidium can kill copy pros at high cell densities. So I increased the concentrations to 1,000 microgram carbon per liter. Now you can see mixed prey are below the reference. So the coccidinium is toxic at this concentration. This is what I expected. Then I think, how about reducing the concentration? 